Hi everybody, I think that many of you have tried this kind of Kinder Bueno bar. Let's open it up. We're gonna make the exact same one, just in a big size. But first you need to try it. On the outside we have chocolate, then a waffle layer with nut paste, and then the cream itself, which is also pretty nutty. The first thing we need is a big, huge mold. Our dad's gonna make it for us from this huge pipe. Using a tape measure, we measure out a meter of 20 and mark it with a marker. From the side, we drill a hole with a screwdriver and then cut the pipe with a jigsaw. Now we're gonna draw along and cut the pipe into exactly two parts. Now we will make a stand out of wood. To do this, we cut a large board into two parts. Circle the outer diameter of the pipe and cut it with the jigsaw. With sandpaper, we knock down all of the burrs. Two such details are needed. We need a wide board to put between them and tighten everything with screws. Two large semicircles were also carved out of wood, and three smaller ones, but at the same time they are twice as wide. We put half of the pipe on the stand, lubricate a large semicircle with glue, and put it into the pipe. Additionally, we fix them with screws. We put the missing parts in. and our form is ready. But in order to be used, we take some small half circles and wrap them with some cling film. Done. Then we lubricate our mold with some oil. We're gonna smear it along the walls. and then glue down some parchment paper. Then we put everything back in its place. Let's start our cooking with the nuts. There are 20 kilograms of them here. We transfer them into a meat grinder. And grind them through a small nozzle. Now we'll need to melange sugar, and cocoa. We collect one kilogram of crushed nuts. Then turn on the melange and pour them in. By the way, at first while the mass is dry, it can stop. Therefore, we'll help it out. Then add in some sugar and cocoa powder. After about 40 minutes, we'll get a chocolate nut paste. We'll just tilt our melange and put all of the paste into a pan. Thus, we turn 10 kilograms of nuts into the paste. Done. Now let's make our dough for the waffles. We break 48 eggs into a big gastro pan. Add three kilograms of sugar. For taste, we'll use some vanilla sugar. And then we go to the butter. Cut off 1.5 kilograms and put it into a saucepan. Also add one kilogram of margarine. Let's put all this onto the stove. Melt and pour into our big catering pan. Let's whisk our mix until it's smooth. Now 
way to stay to pour in three kilograms of flour. And then finally knead the dough. Done. We scoop it up with a spoon and put it into our waffle iron. We close them. And after three minutes, they're ready. You can get them out. And then we open up our nut paste and spread a thick layer onto the waffle. Then we glue it inside of the mold. We worked with like a conveyor belt, really. And while one was making waffles, four waffle irons at once, the second was putting them into a mold until it was completely filled. Well, let's go to the cream. We open up some bottled chicken eggs and pour them into a bowl. There are 20 eggs in each bottle, and so we have 10 of them in total. Pour in three kilograms of flour and mix it all with a mixer until smooth. And then we made this thicker and we will cook the cream in such a huge saucepan. We take a lot of milk out of the refrigerator. Open them up. And pour them into a large saucepan. Then we put this under the burner, cover with the lid, and turn on the gas. As soon as the milk is heated, we add in 12 kilograms of sugar to it. And mix it all with a construction mixer. Without stopping stirring, pour in the thickener into a thin stream. You also need to melt three kilograms of butter. Pour this into the cream. And here are the remaining crushed nuts. Mix them into our cream. You gotta do this until it's smooth. It's already thickened up, so we pour it into our mold. Spread out the waffles with the remaining nut paste and put it on top of the cream. That's it, we send our mold into the freezer. Two days later, everything's hardened up. Therefore, we move on to the next step. We're gonna open up some milk chocolate and send it into a Marmite. Turn it on so this starts to heat up and stirring constantly melt that chocolate. Now it's liquid, but to make it even better on the bar, you need to add some oil. And mix. It's much more liquidy now. Now it's time to get the mold out of the freezer. We transfer the liquid chocolate onto the waffles and smear it around. We keep doing this until we cover the entire surface with chocolate. Now let's put some more chocolate into the Marmite. We put a sheet of chipboard on top of the bar and press it as hard as possible with stretch film.
first we lower the form to the floor. And then we already turn it over into this little thing covered with film. Now the stretch foam can be removed. Carefully lift up the mold. And tear off the parchment. And open up the film around that wooden semicircle. We screw a self-tapping screw into it and take it out. And then we remove the film itself. The extra milk chocolate pellets have already been melted. Therefore, we scoop milk chocolate with a measuring cup and just pour it all over our bar. We do one more layer. And then just let the chocolate harden. Now we just need to repeat only these thin strips of dark chocolate. Therefore, put a bowl on a steam bath, put some dark chocolate into it. And constantly stirring, melt it. Our already liquid chocolate is poured into a pastry bag. And we pour this over the bar. That's it, our giant Kinder Bueno is finally ready. I think it turned out just perfect, you guys. Well, let's cut off a piece. Hey there, everybody. Surely everyone knows what a Kinder Milk Slice is, right? Today, we decided to make one on a truly unimaginable scale. But first, let's open it up and see what it's made of. Here, we see two chocolate biscuits and a bunch of cream. It's obviously very tasty, but the cream is a little chemically. Let's go to the store. We decided to split the purchase up into two stages. Today, we're doing the first. We'll buy all the groceries we need to make huge biscuits. The first thing we need is chicken eggs, as many as 840 of them. The next thing we'll need is sugar. This will take up to 30 kilograms. 11 kilograms of cocoa powder. Two kilograms of baking powder. 25 kilograms of flour, 13 liters of oil. With all this, we're headed to the checkout. First purchase cost us $245. Now we'll cook the biscuits in our huge oven. But we need to preheat it so it has time to warm up. Now we open up the boxes of eggs. We take out two trays and put them on the lower part of the table. We need 420 eggs for one batch. We put two containers on the table, one smaller, the other bigger. Now we take the eggs and separate the yolks from the whites. It 
took us about one and a half hours to separate all the eggs. Done. We set the egg whites aside for now. We take the sugar, open it, and pour 15 kilograms into the yolks. Now, using a cement mixer, we beat the yolks into the sugar. until the whole mixture turns white. Now we take six liters of oil, open it, and fill her up. If we use any less, our biscuit just won't hold its shape the way we need it to. Then we mix well. Ready for our next step. We need five and a half kilograms of cocoa powder. We open it and pour it out. And now we mix. It takes another 20 minutes or so to mix it all up and we're left with a very thick dough. Now we need to carefully pour in six and a half liters of boiling water. We'll mix this in so that the dough thins out a bit. Done. Now we need flour. We'll start by pouring in the first five and a half kilograms. And mix it up. Then we'll add another seven and a half kilograms. Now we add in another kilogram of baking powder. And we get a nice, even dough. Our pot is filled to the brim, so we'll take a big wash basin and move our dough into it. Now let's take our egg whites and pour some of them into another saucepan. We tried beating them with our industrial mixer, but it didn't work out. I guess it's pretty impossible to beat that many egg whites into a dense mixture. So, we decided to use a self-mixer that does everything itself. Let's pour a little bit of the egg whites into each of them. And turn it on. The process has started. After about five minutes, we get this foam. That means it's time to add sugar. We'll mix this for another two minutes, and then we can move these whipped egg whites into the chocolate dough. Now let's carefully mix it with a spatula so that none of the air bubbles come out of the whipped mixture. We're going to load in our next portion of egg whites. Move it back to the bowl. And mix. As a result, you're going to have a really lush dough. With the second half already in the basin, we do the same thing. Now our biscuit dough is ready. But what do we bake it in? We got help from a friend in a workshop. They drafted up a drawing on a computer which sends the blueprint to a huge machine that uses a laser to cut out the desired piece of sheet metal. We take our piece of metal from the machine and cut out the places for bins with a grinder. Now we bend the edges until we get a box shape formed. Then all the seams are welded together and we're left with a giant baking sheet. Now we pour oil all over it and smear it around with a brush. We take out some parchment and cover the baking sheet with it. Thanks to the oil, our parchment will stick well to the sheet. So we cover the whole thing. Done. Now we pour out dough onto it and level it out.
done. We transfer the baking sheet into the oven and push it in. We'll bake this for four hours at 180 degrees. Then we turn off the oven and leave the biscuit in there until morning, so it has time to set and thicken. The next morning, we take it out. It's risen a little and completely baked. Now we need to make sure the tender part of the biscuit is at the top. We figured out the best way to do it is by applying plywood to the top and two planks to the sides. We'll fix these together tightly with clamps. We want to remove the baking sheet for now. So we put another piece of plywood on the table with four bricks on it and turn the whole thing over. We remove the clamps and gently lift off the baking sheet. We end up with a beautiful biscuit that weighs as much as 50 kilograms. And it only took two days to prepare it. We'll set it aside for now. Now we need to knead the dough for another identical biscuit. Load it all into the oven, close the doors, and the next morning we have another biscuit, just as beautiful as the first one. It's time to go pick up the groceries to make the cream. The first thing we need is a lot of condensed milk. Six two-liter packages of milk. an unrealistic amount of Amish cheese, 80 kilograms. We'll need agar agar. We took 200 packages. Two kilograms of vanilla sugar. Three five liter jugs of water. We take all this to the checkout and bag it all up. Our second check came out to $506. We put the Amish cheese that we bought onto the table and opened them up. We have 80 kilograms of Amish cheese. All this needs to be ground up and preferably quickly. We've removed the front plate from the mixer and attached the meat grinder to it and the saucer on top. We open another plate and attach the blender. We take a package of cheese, open it, and pour part of it into the blender and the other part into the meat grinder. We close the blender and put a saucepan below the grinder and turn on the mixer. While we are pushing the cheese through the meat grinder, the blender is taking care of everything on its own. The only help it needs is to periodically move out the cheese curds. We ground it all using six hands until the cheese runs out. Three hours later, we have a whole pan of this cheesy mass. We take the tub of water and move the cheese mass into it. We open the vanilla sugar and pour it in. Now we just need the condensed milk. We open a bottle and pour the whole thing into the mixture. We made sure to buy extra, so there's a lot left. Now we use the industrial mixture to mix the cheese with the milk. We're left with a creamy mass. We take three jugs with water in a saucepan. 
open the water and pour it out. Now we take agar agar, open it, and pour all 200 packets into the water. For now, just mix the agar agar and leave to soak for 30 minutes. We cut off part of the roll of industrial foil with a grinder and wrap it around the bottom biscuit in a circle. We fix all this together with tape. And to keep it all even tighter, we will also attach the boards on the sides with the same adhesive tape. It turned out to be such a good form for filling the cream that it doesn't spread. Put a saucepan with water and a gar gar on the stove. Boil for two minutes and pour in hot milk. Mix well. This liquid will make the cheesy mass harden and that way it won't be crushed under the weight of the second biscuit. Pour half into one basin and mix well. Now the second half. While the filling has not started to thicken, we quickly transfer it to the biscuits. Level the filling and leave it to cool overnight. The next morning, the cream is hardened. We remove the foil framework. We had a very tall layer of cream turn out. Finally, the big moment. All that remains is to put the second biscuit on the cream. Done. We finally made a Kinder Milk slice. All it took was six days. After calculating the weight of the groceries we bought, we found out that our huge dessert weighs as much as 210 kilograms and costs $766. Let's cut off a piece. This is the type of huge chunk that we're going to ship off to all of our friends and relatives. Look at what a huge sponge cake turned out inside. I put the cream on a piece of sponge cake, covered it with a second one, and now let's try it. The biscuit is almost exactly the same as the original, but the cream is different. It's so natural, made of cottage cheese and condensed milk, and in the original slice, a confusing mass with all sorts of thickeners. It was probably the longest and most difficult project we've had in recent times, and you have no idea how much work has been done behind the scenes. Calculations, testing different sponge cake recipes, cream. Well, if you want me to cook something else this large scale, on the same level as this, then like the video. As soon as we get 500,000 likes, we'll shoot a new giant meal. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Bye, everybody.